Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, I would like to talk today about um, mathematical expectation of the product of two random variables. Well, this lecture is part of the uh, course of advanced mathematics presented on unizor.com. I recommend you to watch this lecture from this website because it has notes, basically the same information which I'm presenting as a lecture is in the notes, basically as a, as a textbook. Um, well, besides, if you are on the website, there is certain educational process, the functionality which you can actually engage in, which includes in, um, enrolling into the courses and taking exams, etc. And the site is free, by the way. <coughs> so, um, expectation, mathematical expectation of the product of two random variables. Well, let me just up front state something which we will discuss. Mathematical expectation of the product of two random variables is equal or not equal, that's a question mark, the product of their mathematical expectations. Well, first of all, let me j just address this problem um, intuitively and then analogous to mathematical expectation of the sum of two random variables I will talk about. So, um, intuitively, what is mathematical expectation? Well, people view it as a point around which all the values of the random variable are concentrated. So, if, let's say, mathematical expectation of a temperature of a healthy person is such and such, and then we measure temperature of, I don't know, 100 different people, and all of them are healthy individuals, their temperature will be different, obviously, but very much close to this so-called normal temperature, which is actually a mathematical expectation, average, if you wish, um, of, of the temperature of a healthy body. Now, if you will take um, uh, two different um, populations, let's say in I don't know, United States of America and, and China, and you will measure the temperature here and there. Well, they are kind of different, right? Different group of people, but I'm pretty sure that mathematical expectation of the product of our temperatures, temperature of one person from United States times temperature one person in China. And uh, we will take the mathematical expectation of these products. It will be the same as if we will just multiply um, separately the averages. So that's intuitively. Now, I'm still thinking about this question mark. It's very, very important to understand that intuitive approach is not necessarily correct mathematically. But let's talk about um, sum of two variables, sum of two random variables. Now, with sum of two random variables, we have already proven that this is true for any pair of random variables. And um, let me just very, very briefly explain again. I mean, you can always refer to the lecture where it's proven, but I will just repeat this uh, particular proof because I do need it for, for the product. So, how can we actually prove this thing? Well, let's imagine that we have two different um, probability spaces, Q1, which is values x1, x2, etc., xm. And we have the random variable xc, which uh, takes these values with corresponding probabilities. Oops. And then we have another Probability, probability space, 
which contains values y1, etc., yn, different number, obviously, of elementary events with different measure allocated to each one q1, qn. Well, obviously, sum of all p from 1 to n is equal to 1, and sum of all q from 1 to n is also equal to 1. So we have these two random variables, which are defined on these probabilistic spaces. So basically, you can just say, forget about probability spaces. You can say that these random variables take these values with these probabilities. Now, let's construct a new variable, which is called c plus eta zeta. All right. The variable zeta, what values can it take? Well, it can take value, for instance, x1 plus y1, right? What will be the probability of this? Well, that's the probability of uh, C taking the value, the value x1, and probability of eta taking the value y1, right? So let's call it R11. So it's the probability of C taking the value xi and eta taking the value yj. And this I call rij, right? So plus. Now my um, C can take value x1 and eta can take value y2. And what's the probability of this? Well, according to my um, notation, it's R12, etc. The, the last value with x with c equal to x1, the value will be yn and r1n. Then, My C can take value plus x2 and eta can take value y1 and probability will be r1 to 1. Also x2 y2 would be r2 2 and the last one in this row would be x2 yn r2 n plus. So what are we doing right now? We are summarizing values of this variable times the probability of that value. So this is actually a mathematical expectation of this. That's what we are talking about right now. So etc 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 will be x3 plus whatever x and the last one will be xm plus y1 r m1 plus x m plus y2 r m2 plus etc plus x m y n r m n so that's my probability times value and we add the, add them all together and that's how we form the expectation but now, let's regroup this. Now, we will regroup it in this fashion. We will just open the parentheses, right? And we will add together x1 times r11, r12,
plus etc plus r one n. Okay. Then x two from here times r two one r two two plus r two n etc up to xm m1 m2 mn now let's think about what is this sum this summarizes the probabilities of x1 taking value 1 in all these cases and y uh, and and eta taking any basically value from y1 to y2 to 1n so we are summarizing events when x1 is fixed that's the value of xi and the value of eta is not really fixed it's basically any because we are summarizing throughout all the uh, all the values of n uh, of uh, eta which is basically from y1 to yn now what what is this probability it's a probability of xi taking x1 and eta being any we don't really care what value eta actually takes right which means it's just the probability of x1 to be equal to p1 and this is corresponding with p2 and this is corresponding with p m right that's what it is now we'll continue if you will continue we will take y y1 times r11 plus r12 plus etc plus R one N. No, I'm sorry. With Y we have to go down. Yes, with Y we have to go down, which means R one one, R two one, etc. Plus R M one. Now y2, 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 y2. It's r1, 2 plus r2, 2 plus etc. plus r2, uh, m2. etc. And finally yn. R one R one N plus R two N plus etc plus R M N. Now what are these? Well, same thing. What is this probability? It's the probability of C taking any value, either one or two, or uh, x one or x two or x m, while um, eta would be always equal to y1 which means what so we are we care about only uh, the value of eta which is equal to y1 and any value of x and that is q1 this is q2 and the last one is qn so what do we have right now we have this x1 times p1 x2 times p2 and xm times etc times this is etc and the last one is xm times pm which is expectation of this part is expectation of c and this one is expectation of eta so as we see with sum of two um, random variables we always have that the expectation of their sum is equal to sum of their expectations. 
So why do I have some doubts about the product? Well, let's try to do it the same thing with the product. So what does it mean we have to do in this particular case? Well, if we will put product here, we have to put product here, and 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 here. So now, you see, it's not easy right now to construct something like this multiplied by this, right? Because in the first place, when it was a plus, we have just summarized, basically, we opened the parentheses and we have multiplied, right? With this, it's not that easy. So, what can we do about this? Well, let me again jump up to the very end of this lecture. This formula is actually correct, but only in case, only in case, when our uh, variables C and eta are independent. That's what's very, very important. And to go further, I would like actually to remind you what independence actually mean. Again, you can always refer to the lecture about independent random variables, but in particular, independence um, means that the uh, probability the probability actually I don't need this anymore we know what we have to prove let's say probability of C is equal to X I and eta is equal to yj which I have actually suggested to write it as this one equals to it's a probability of the combined events now if, if x if uh, uh, xi and eta take these values xi and, and, and yj independently then we know that the probability of um, intersection of two events is actually equal to the uh, product of their probability. So it's the pro probability of C equals to Xi times probability of eta equals to Yj, which is Pi times Pj. Right? Pi is the probability of Xi is a, uh, to be equal to Xy and uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's QJ. It's Q. So, that is a very, very important property of independent variables. It's basically um, a property of independent events. This being one event and this being another event. And combined events uh, if events are independent, the probability of the combination is equal to product of two uh, probabilities. It's like probability of one um, die to fall on number two and another uh, to fall on, let's say, number four. Well, it means the combination of two dies is two four. And the probability of this is 136, obviously, right? Because there are 36 pairs, but at the same time, this 136 is equal to 1 6 times 1 6, which is probability of the first die to be uh, to, to, to fall on the 2 and the second to fall on the 4. So it's always like this for independent events. And that's what we are going to use in this particular case. So let's forget about this. This absolutely not working in case of a product of random variables, but we do have this. All the different xi and yj are different values 
which our product can take and r i j is the corresponding probability of this but as we know here every r i j is equal to p i times q j for independent c and eta independent random variables so let's consider what happens if i will do this times it's equal to x1 times p1 plus x2 times p2 etc plus xm times pm that's the expectation mathematical expectation of c times y1 q1 plus y2 q2 plus etc plus y n q n right now what if i will open the parentheses and multiply this times this well i will have x1 p1 times y1 q1 right plus x1 p1 times y2 q2 plus etc then i will take x2 and multiply by each of them etc etc so what will i get i will basically get this but instead of r i will have x1 times y1 p1 q1 right this times this plus x1 p1 x1 y2 p1 q2 etc and the last one would be x1 yn p1 qn plus then i will do the same thing with x2 where x3 etc and i will finish with xm times y1 times pm q1 plus xm y2 pm q2 plus etc plus xm yn pm qn so it's exactly the same as this one except instead of r11 i have p1q1 instead of r12 i have p1q2 but for independent variables they are equal to each other that's why i can say that this mathematical expectation of the product of two uh, random variables is equal to their to product of their mathematical expectation in case they are independent and this relationship is true so if this is true this is the key then both um, expressions are basically the same expression for a, a, a mathematical expectation of the product of two random variables and the product of their mathematical expectations so this is the key independence well um, so you see there is a significant difference between sum and the product of two random variables in case of a sum we have this unconditionally that expectation of the sum is equal to sum of expectations in case of a product of two random variables we have this only in case independent variables are independent from each other which means their combined probability is equal to the product of their individual uh, probabilities independent of each other well that's basically it i do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture it's on unizor.com as i said before and um, I, I do actually would like to uh, I would like to encourage to go into the website and engage in the educational process which means you will just go through the whole course take all the tests exams whatever and preferably do it under somebody's supervision your parents or your teacher that's it for today thank you very much and good luck <laughs>